Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the David Addison Show with me, David Addison. Shockingly, yes, we've made it to double figures. How cool is that? And today's episode, episode 10, is going to be, the entire episode is going to be my conversation I had recently with, now he's Italian, so he has an Italian name. Bear with me, Salvatore Di, now as an English person, I want to say, De Angelis, right? That's probably incorrect. It probably sounds very heavily English accented, which I always try and avoid, but it is what it is. But I just know him as Salvo, right? It's far easier. <laughs> now, Salvo is part of the Reflex team. Now, the Reflex team previously just had the Reflex app. Now they have Reflex and Reexpose. And Salvo's job, he writes all the code. Basically, that's it. The team of three. And they're all really, really nice guys. All of them have different responsibilities within the app. Salvo's is to write all the code. So it's, it's a very interesting conversation. I love to learn. One of the reasons I enjoy doing the podcast is I get to speak to developers like Salvo and I get to learn from them. We don't go like deep. I'm not like taking away information that's going to allow me to then start coding. <laughs> it's not learning in that sense just getting these these people's perspective and and their their opinions from getting the opinions from the mind of a person who is also able to code and salvo as well he teaches at a master level and i'm pretty sure he does that in english i'm pretty sure cuz he teaches he's he's from italy he works in another country speaking like it's it's just amazing how how some of these people's minds work and just just speaking with them just in, inspires me. I'm actually like full disclosure. I've just listened to our conversation back again. It's over an hour. It's a great conversation, and particularly the end. What we say at the end just inspired me to to up my game, up my own game in the in the YouTube video making thing that I do. Right, because it's not firing on all cylinders, obviously. But now I'm like, after listening to him, because he's a he's a fan of me. He likes my videos. He's very kind about my videos. He watches me, and it's like, ah, I want to make the videos and then see get get the reaction from from people like him. So, right, enough from me. Here is my full conversation with Salvo of the Reflex Team. Enjoy. So, um, Salvo, let's let's carry on. We were speaking then. I wasn't intending to use this as part of the show, as I just mentioned, but it was really interesting. So I, I thought, why not just start now? So we were just talking about, um, as I introduced him, Salvo is the main man behind all the code in the Reflex Pro Camera app and Reexpose app. And we were just talking about programming languages how it relates to the languages that we speak. So Salvo was just telling me how um, like Swift, for example, was written in by people who used English keyboards. And when he uses an Italian keyboard, how it's much more difficult. So do, do you want to just carry on, Salvo, where you left off? Yeah, there? So, yeah it's, it's, uh, this is not only Swift, it's uh, most of the programming languages, I think they were developed in, uh, in the US. And, uh, and therefore, I mean, programming languages need uh, many symbols uh, because the, the the compiler and the and, and the other softwares need to to read the language and then translate it in machine code, and uh, they need symbols so that they know what what they're doing, not not just letters. and And these symbols are usually the column, the silicon semicolon, the curly braces, the um, yeah question mark or exclamation mark. Uh, mm -hmm. And all the symbols in the English layout are e very nicely laid out at the very right of the keyboard, and they are there, super nicely accessible. But the, in other keyboard layouts, uh, that is not the case. For example, in Italian, all this right part is all for our uh, these words with an accent. So the E with an accent, the U with an accent. Mm. And uh, and so to, to to make the curly braces, then you have to do a weird combination of it's just not efficient. So I uh, since long time now, I always uh, get my 
my computers with an English uh, layout, with an English keyboard layout. And when I write in Italian, my friends and family don't get any accent. <laughs> <laughs> it changes the words, though. I don't know about Italian, but when yeah, it does, it does. But wife, uh, uh, in... I hope they are proficient enough to understand me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they they must know. They must. Yeah, know. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you ever written anything in um, assembly? No, no. Do you want to try? No, I don't think no. so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I uh, for work and I write in, uh, so they, they, I write a lot of Python, tons and tons of Python. Um, I write uh, MATLAB uh, and I also write C++, which is, uh, which helped. And then of course for the app, uh, it's mainly Swift with a little bit of C++. Right. Um, and uh, among those, uh, I think Swift is the best. I, I like can get so much. I can get my head around C plus um, plus. Uh, C plus plus is the it's most. It's very easy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. C plus plus is the most complicated of all. Oh, is it? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, it's a very old programming language. It was designed in the eighties. Um, it's uh, quite. Uh, it's still quite popular uh, for for many reasons. Uh, the, mainly uh, it's because it's uh, it's very fast it's low level language so it's very close to the machine it's, it's very fast and the, since it's been there since uh, so long there are many libraries and so it is it is a very very uh, popular language but unfortunately the syntax is uh, very 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 heavy uh, compared to modern, more modern programming languages like Python or, or Swift. Right. They like it, but it's by far the most complicated. Uh, no, uh, yeah, there's no discussion about it. I meant to say, uh, not C++, I meant to say CSS. I got confused. Oh, CSS. Is a CSS, yeah. It's a yeah. different beast, let's say. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's that's the one, because when you said C++ is low level, I'm like, no, I don't know no, anything. No, no, anything. No, no, no. <laughs> Yes, CSS is the one that looks looks nice to me. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think on a, on a previous podcast, I was telling uh, Ben Sandowski how I wrote a snake game once. And it's a, a language that I don't think it exists anymore. It was, I think it's part of Java, or it was called ActionScript mm. 3.0. Okay. Um, but that's this is a long, long, long time ago. But uh, it's not... Um... I mean, it's not easy. In the end, uh, in the end, these programming languages are all the same. I mean, the, the basics are all the same. Uh, so it's actually interesting and and cool on how much you can do just building on few main blocks. Um, in the end, it's only building on very few concepts, and once you get those those concepts concepts are there for every programming language and and then you can do basically everything with a lot of work and uh, and swearing but you can do a lot basically <laughs> everything and if you were able to write a, a snake uh, I mean yeah in, it means that you were already quite advanced you should oh, have really a, oh thank you step, step more <laughs> they had a high score and everything <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was all, I was 18, 17, 18 years old. Um, but yeah, I'm all, I, I, I downloaded Xcode once and I was like, no, Dave, what are you doing? Why are you giving yourself more stuff to do? You are... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day uh, I will, yeah. I will have another look, but I find this all fascinating. And obviously this has taken you to, um, where did you learn by the way? Um, I don't know. Like, oh. uh, as I said, they do a lot of programming at work. Before that, I, um, I just uh, learned it by myself, which I think it's the totally possible today. Um, we don't live in a world in shortage of knowledge. Uh, mm. so you, you can, you can become an expert, uh, just by yourself in programming, in, I mean, in programming. Yeah. I truly believe that. 
so you learned how to you taught yourself mm -hmm. these um how to code and things like that and yeah. it's led you to teaching at a master level and it's also led you to develop reflex pro camera yeah. and yes. re-expose yes which is very very exciting my first question is and I haven't prepared anything, by the way, for our conversation. I like it to be natural. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm challenging myself with my social skills to <laughs> just have a conversation with somebody. Um, so when it comes to writing, to writing an app or writing anything, really, mm -hmm. someone I would imagine who is writing the code is, has a quite a logical brain, but I could be very wrong about that. Mm -hmm. You obviously work with other people on the design side as mm -hmm. well. Like how how does that collaborative process work? Is someone coming to you with an icon, for example, or a yeah. design, and you have to write the code for it? Yeah, 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 exactly. It's a um, it's about that. It's 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 something like that. So mm. um, usually the way we work uh, for the way we have worked for the for the two apps actually, it's like I start with the core functionalities. I start experimenting. I see what it can be done. I study the APIs, try to, to implement a few things. Mm. And then the guys, uh, Mattia and, and Josue, they, uh, they start uh, thinking of what a possible UI can be. But usually they wait until I tell, hey, guys, I have this. So now we start for real because the experimental part has, uh, has brought good, good results. This was the case for the... Uh, for the roll-on exposure, I, I didn't know how to do it at the beginning. So for for many, I mean, not not so much time, but for a couple of months, it was just me trying to figure out if I could do this. Mm. So once the the core function, so the, the functions are in place, um, then we start brainstorming on how the UI elements could be, how we lay out everything, and then you the guys make it uh, in. A, it's basically in a SVG format. They, they basically design it, um, design the interface. And, uh, and then I tell them, okay, I mean, from this design, I need this image exported in these dimensions. And uh, I need them like uh, somehow uh, the position, the coordinates of all the elements. So they export a big folder of all these graphic assets and uh, and then I include them uh, into code. And in this process, uh, there is always something that from the graphics to the app, since we don't have an infinite amount of time, uh, it gets compromised. Then maybe they design something that it's, uh, oh, we should do this cool animation that does this <laughs> and this. And then I say, okay, guys, this, this will take too much time. We have to simplify this because maybe it's not adding. I mean, if we were Apple, maybe we could do this, but it's better to ship with something functional. And so we compromise a little bit mm -hmm. uh, until then we uh, iterate also, because maybe you design something, then I mount it, I start using it. Then it's, like, ah, maybe this is too small. Uh, right, it's kind of annoying. Right. or this is too big actually we need more space for this additional button we have to include or because i mean it's also difficult from the design point of view to picture all the different uh, scenarios so then you put a button and say guys i mean what then when we activate the histogram this goes on top of it so there's a lot of iterations mm. Um, so you're having to imagine what the user is going to do and when they might tap on a certain function. Exactly, exactly, and it's very difficult to to get it right at the very like with the very first attempt. Uh, you need to kind of use the the UI uh, and the app to realize oh we have to change this or this this works. Um, but that's how it is. So they produce the assets and I implement the assets inside the the code. Tape, so to, to make it work, to make it uh, alive, <laughs> let's say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you were saying how you, you were like self-taught completely when, uh, I don't know whose idea it was to attempt a camera app, but when the, the idea is um, approached to come up with a camera app, do you have to then learn AV Foundation or are you already familiar with it? Or Oh, <laughs> 
I had to learn Swift. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I didn't know. No pressure. Yeah. So we, uh, we came up with this idea. We wanted to do it. Um, and actually, uh, we, Josue and I made a small app when we were in, uh, during our bachelor studies. Um, but that was Objective-C uh, the, back then, the old programming language that Apple used. So when I started this, I, uh, I, I didn't know anything about Swift. It was the first time that I, t- I touched Swift. Right. Um, but as I said, if you're familiar with programming in general, switching from one language to the other, it's, uh, it's quite easy. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a big deal. Um, um, yes, and then, and then I started to look at the AV Foundation and I mean, it was, it was clear. Um, it's AV Foundation, I would say, is a framework, uh, it's one of the best documented framework that Apple has. Um, yeah, they so, obviously care about their camera a lot. Yeah, exactly, so exactly. I mean, it's, uh, it's exactly. It's a really. Um, it's so it has its own. It's not perfect. Let's say mm. maybe the API is perfect, but the documentation and some things are not clear. Uh, but overall, it's uh, it's really well documented. So it was quite easy to to get into it and um, uh, yeah, and implement an app around it. Um, the difficult part with apps is when you do, when you don't have an API of, for doing it, and then you have to create the API yourself, and that is where it gets it gets quite complicated. Like with the uh, frame averaging and things. Like with the frame averaging, like with many other things, uh, like zebra stripes and uh, histogram and. Okay. Oh really? Yeah, there's, there's no API. Wow. No, because I mean, every app seems to have a. Yeah, Instagram. So I mean, I'm not trying to downplay. What no, you're no, doing, no, no. It so, can't be so, that difficult. No, so I should take it back. There is mm-hmm. one API, a couple of APIs uh, that can produce an Instagram from an image. So this I take it back. Mm-hmm. Now you visualize the Instagram. Uh, the default it's quite ugly, so that you have to kind of wrap around it. So there is, but there is, there is. I take it back. But um, um, other things. Uh, there's not so much. Uh, and this is normal. You cannot mm. have an API for everything. Uh, you have to build on top of the tools you have, uh, the functionalities you want. Like yeah. when I say there is not an API for focus picking, it means that there isn't something that I say, give me focus picking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there is uh, something like that saying, give me shutter speed of one second. Mm-hmm. So that's the difference. Uh, but of course, uh, it's not... Uh, written by me bit by bit, then you need to understand what focus picking is and you need to uh, understand like, um, oh, maybe I can use uh, this other API for this little bit and this other API for this other little bit and combine the results and make make something that works. Okay. So it's like you're just experimenting constantly. It is always uh, an experimentation, a constant experimentation. Yes, it takes a long, long time. Uh, and of, of course now it, it gets better and better right now mm. after one year uh, of um, more than one year of development in this area because also like uh, let's say iOS development but programming in general is vast so mm-hmm. even though I have the basics for every programming language uh, I don't know how to make a, I don't know a server side uh, web app uh, mm-hmm. i never done it and that's totally different skill set um thankfully you don't moment. need to no 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 hopefully not i think it's already <laughs> enough <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah thankfully apple ditched that in 2008 the web apps yeah, yeah. Remember? Uh, i remember this iweb uh ah but you mean like the web there was app- no app store yeah, there was only the extension. There was no SDK for anything. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, web apps they would they will be there for staying. I mean, um, like browser stuff. Um, oh yeah. And also, also there are some apps uh, that are just clients for for more server side uh, operations. So it's a totally different. Uh, let's say um, it's a, it's a different field which I I don't know. But mm. after 
one year now in this camera business. There I feel quite confident and now I'm faster and faster. And I don't need to experiment so much. I almost, or, or, I'm almost uh, always very close to the solution. Let's say the first die I try. Mm. Interesting. I will touch on that a bit more um, a bit later. But can mm. you could, could you take me through um, like when you first put Reflex out there after? Because you said it's not your first app, but is it is it the first like sort of big? so-called big app that you yeah 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 i mean released, the app yeah. Was a toy compared yeah to <laughs> okay so when you uh released reflex were yeah. you how did you feel yeah so um i think um i i think i didn't even realize it <laughs> <laughs> i released it and i was already working on uh, new features so yeah but when I know I, exactly what you mean. <laughs> but when I released it was, um, let's say, I didn't have any expectation. Um, I Somehow I was in this mindset of, okay, I'm releasing it. Uh, it's not super good now. The app is for free, uh, but it's not at the level of the, the top apps in the field. So I released it just to have a milestone. And continue to continue to work on it until he got to a point where he can compete. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was not a, a big day for me. It was just I see. it was just like a milestone in the project. Let's say. I see. That's interesting. Yeah, because like when I release a video, I don't think, oh my gosh, like I have eleven thousand subscribers, and then this, the the YouTube audience in general is huge. So. I'm putting myself out there and for criticism or whatever. And mm. I have to be, you're right. I'm not even thinking about it. I hit publish and I disappear and do <laughs> something else. I like, immediately, I'm not even thinking about it. It's uh, strange, isn't it? Uh, it's like the the mission is never complete <laughs> or anything. Like yeah, that. it is. It is. Yes. Um, but there were other, other uh, moments where, I felt a bit like okay, now this is uh, this is con- uh, considerable. Let's say so. This is worth it now to take, like to sit and and enjoy what has been done. Yeah. Um, so um, the when we released the the, the first low shutter modes in uh, in Pro Camera, that was the moment where I I was happy that uh, we made this work because it's mm-hmm. um, it is not. It is somehow I, I still haven't figured out what's what is wrong um, with the with the APIs, um, but there I need to kind of yeah, figure out myself um, how to do it, mm-hmm. and in the end it it worked, um, and that was like the moment where we sat back and we started to enjoy a little bit for uh-huh. a couple of days. Then. We <laughs> I remember when you uh, we we spoke for the first time. I think it was even longer. I hadn't come out yet, uh, no. so it must have been May. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was about to be released because I told you I've just been shown this this raw app, and you couldn't believe it, and I couldn't believe it. And yeah. you told me you were working on slow shutter, and I think I said to you at the time like dude, like take your time. Don't try and implement all these things. Just keep it optimized, keep it simple. But I think Reflex now, it's it's in a unique place in the market with what it does. There's nothing else. You have Moment, I think, is your closest. Yeah, I think that's the... Because ProCamp 8 just doesn't work. No, Let's be no. honest, it's just not in the same league. You and Moment, obviously Moment has time-lapse and video as well, which puts it in an almost different market. yeah. yeah. It is true. Mm. It is true. It's um. Uh, I I I have to say um, the moment up. It's a uh, it's a very good app. Um, I, I it's it's very good uh, for what it does. Mm. But again, it's it's kind of all in one. Yeah. Uh, but it's true. The other apps, uh, they are not for the for for let's say JPEG like files. They are not uh, at the same level. Yeah. And uh, maybe they're all having the same issues that I tried to solve and that moment also solved. 
So is it like a is it a secret of how to? Obviously, it's not a complete secret because there's a few other. Uh, I think there's there's three that come to mind who have figured it out. Mm. Uh, yourself, moment, and obviously Mario for with even longer. But uh, is there anyone I, else? Uh, Cam. Mm, I, 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 I can't. <laughs> I can't. Uh, so I. Uh, I, I should know many. this. <laughs> <laughs> I tested many, um, and I could not find. Maybe there is something out there. I mean, the app store is ginormous, uh, but but I the, all the ones that are most known, uh, I could not find anything that um, um, that solved this. Uh, with raw, it's different. It's a different beast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. that's uh, that is that is a different. It's almost at the level that it should not be compared. Uh, you seem to I, figure it out quite quickly, though, from my point of view. Obviously, I don't know behind the scenes how long you were working on it. Ah, uh, that was, uh, I mean, uh, that was one shot, the raw. As long as, as soon as I decided to, so it took so long, so long for figuring out the, comp- the, the slow shutter in the, in the reflex program. I think that was six months every day mm. trying to solve one single problem. The app was there. The UI was there. Everything was there. It's just the motion blur part was not working. The main and, thing, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. And I could have made it work as many other camera apps do. Stop the blurring. I could have done it. I mean, I could have, uh, I think this um, uh, slow shot the cam does it uh, very well. At some point, you just stop the blurring. And at least you don't get this very, ugly artifacts of color bleeding and uh well, they but I use wanted... video don't they mm-hmm. they use video yeah so we have to um it depends what we mean with video mm. <laughs> it's the so same the like live photo technology yes so what is video? you can export an mp4 you can export mp4 um uh but again in, so for digital cameras, uh, videos and uh, photos are uh, kind of the same. Quite, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, um, uh, when so we, you can see it as a video. Actually, in fact, also the raw cameras, like even longer or us, it's also that. Uh, okay. It it's basically taking many frames, right? Yeah. Uh, the important thing is to make sure that it takes the frame with the maximum quality. So it doesn't compress it or it doesn't do anything weird with, uh, um, because for, for videos, the, I mean, uh, the frames are compressed because you have to write it in memory and uh, you have to have it uh, I mean, fast so that you can keep the frame rate and, and stuff. So we don't have this requirement for, slow, for a slow shot photo. The frame rate, uh, it's uh, um, it's fine if it is not perfectly consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the end, it is a video, but it doesn't change. Uh, even in the video, if they will not stop the blurring, I'm almost sure you they, they will have some kind of issue, the same issues that uh, you you saw with the with the version that was not working. Ah, uh, yeah, because it was working and then it wasn't working. I remember. Yes, yes. So there's a there is a very sneaky that that I don't understand why, uh, but there's a very sneaky point that doesn't <laughs> that uh, make this uh, not working. But in the end, we solved it. Uh, I have to say, uh, it's not the results are perfect. The implementation, though, uh, it can be refined uh, a little bit to save a bit of battery to uh, save a bit of memory uh, mm. and this is again another very usual thing in software development it's kind of a, a golden rule you first make something that works and then you spend your time in optimizing it uh, mm. and trying to squeeze every bit of performance you can do but first you need to make something that works and i would add if it works satisfactorily you can you should even ship it uh because i mean it's it, you always have time to to solve the efficiency problem in a, in an update mm. uh, so that's same on my list because now i know how i can make it a little bit more efficient 
So uh, you don't even notice it with the new phones, to be honest. But with uh, with old phones, uh, Reflex Pro Camera uh, put them in a test <laughs> 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 when when doing a motion blur. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they do. Uh, yeah, it's it's the same with all. Um, all camera apps though you use them on an old phone and yeah. uh like for me robustness stability is such a high i always mention it in my reviews just how stable is something and it's a massive uh point for me mm-hmm. and this this is what sets out the the great apps from the mm-hmm. the ones that need work for me it's how how uh how, yeah just how robust they are are they mm. error prone are they gonna mm. you know uh how's the power management and memory management and all this yeah. sort of thing yes yeah I, I agree i agree uh the, the the best apps should should have the best uh performance but for mm. a small yeah for a small team like uh, ours um uh it's a, so it's a, let's say it's easier said than done Oh, optimizing, I'm I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> optimizing uh, uh, it's it requires a, a, a very long time. So, Le- Reflex Programmer is quite efficient for uh, for uh, anything that is not the mo- the the motion like like the slow shutter, mm-hmm. um, but it can always be uh, it can always get better. Let's say in the end, it's there are new apps. Um, in the landscape of apps, there are still uh, new apps. Oh, definitely. Uh, Reexpose is even more efficient because they I noticed that it's very optimized. Yes, uh, because uh, it had the advantage, Reexpose, of having me one year old. <laughs> <laughs> A different developer. I just like, yeah, it's, it's a kind of two different people uh, doing it. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm really not joking. And uh, it's so satisfying to work on re-exposed code. And I, it's, uh, when I go back to uh, Pro Camera, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> how can I fix this? Um, but I'm, I mean, it works and it will get better and better. Um, mm. Because now I know, now I know how to do, now I know how to, how to make it even better. So it looks uh, the future looks bright. I mean, the, the, the fundamentals are there, and they they're not going to be changed. Uh, and it's already a lot because, as we mm. mentioned, many camera apps could not figure this out. Uh, wow. Well, only you and even longer have figured it out mm. because yes, it is in Lightroom technically, but it's not the same. It's just not the same. The results. Lightroom can do can do handheld, right? Yes, um, it can. It can do DNG, mm-hmm. and it can do handheld DNG. Uh, but it can only do five seconds, and yeah. its frame rate is very low hmm. compared yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the handheld that it's um, sacrificing the frame rate. Um, that's uh, most very ambitious. It's very ambitious. I mean, they are Adobe. Come on. Yeah, they have billions of dollars. <laughs> of if they are rather, yeah. I mean, I guess they have uh, the resources to be ambitious. I would say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm. I'm just looking up. Um, as you were talking, I was looking up the uh, the sizes of the two apps, Reflex compared mm-hmm. to Reexpose, and uh, Reflex is a uh, twenty nine point four megabytes, and Reexpose is just six megabytes. So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, so- quite a lot smaller. Yes, yes, but uh, so there are there is there is different reasons. I mean, um, uh, Reflex does much more. I know that it doesn't seem. So this was also another question that we get a lot. Oh, why don't you didn't you put the row inside the same app? Uh, but uh, but Reflex does already uh, quite a lot. Uh, it is it has all the the steel part. Uh, it has. Um, uh, raw and a pro raw and all the other different formats. Uh, then it has the slow shutter and also the slow shutter has the different uh, different formats mm. um, and and other things. Also, it has more more options like uh, more grids, more more timer and and st- stuff like this, right? So it's a it it is a bigger app. 
um, the other thing that is actually making that space is that inside Reflex, uh, before we had this in-app purchase, and uh, it's it's just this co- this commercials, uh, mm. it's assets. So many, a lot of that is also assets that uh, it's not code; it's assets inside. Right, the, inside I the see. App. Mm. But I think uh, twenty nine megabytes is still quite small. Uh, oh, it's very svelte. Yeah. Uh, nowadays. And uh, yes, uh, the expose is also um, very small, let's say. <laughs> it's also very small. But uh, I mean, I want to be honest with you. It's uh, when you write pure Swift, not using external dependencies or libraries, uh, then the compiler does a very good job in making small apps, even if they work very well. So mm-hmm. uh, it's not all on the programmer side. But of course you have to write pure Swift. If you start including many other libraries written in, uh, I don't know, who knows which languages, and, uh, and then you carry with you a lot of packages that you will never use in your app just to use this little tiny feature, mm. uh, then the yeah the size explodes, yes. I'm always complaining about this. I love optimized apps. I can't stand it when they start adding stuff for no reason. Mm. <laughs> Uh, every app should be made for me. <laughs> that was funny. Um, I think I, I think I tell Josh this all the time. He's like, um, his goal is to make Reflex my app of the year, and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the stop, goal. <laughs> stop making Reflex just for me, because if it was just for me, it would have two features. It would have <laughs> continuous uh, settings. <laughs> And I don't know, something else random. <laughs> so yeah, just please don't just focus yeah. on me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that, uh, that what do you think about that? Um, I think um, the, this, how do you say in English? The elephant in the room? Yeah. This, I don't know if... Uh, developer that is just starting can hear me out, uh, but uh, I would like to say this. Um, making an app, as hard as it can seem, is not the hardest part. Uh, making it, it be able to get uh, some steady stream of revenue, <laughs> that is the hardest part. Yes. Uh, much, much harder. And it's difficult for us developers to to grasp it, this because we are we have the, you you mentioned this logical mind, but we have this bias, right? I have a problem inside the code. Let's say I try to fix it, and then I see the results, and then I make my theories, and and so on. it's also defined. Mm. And then you go into the world and say, oh, I'm not selling. Why? And uh, if I do this, will I sell? It's 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 so undetermined and uh, can be really really frustrating, especially after a long time that uh, that you that you spend on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this goes like so from what to include in the app to make it sell more. Which are your audience? Uh, this is how it, it links to to your um, to your question. Um, it is very hard. And the truth is, you don't know. So you don't know anything. You don't know who your users will be. You don't know which features they will like more. Uh, you don't know which price they are willing to pay. So there's a lot of experimentation there and a lot of uh, uh, frustration as well. Um, it's not easy. Um, mm-hmm. So for for anything, I mean, you understand me very well. Like I think YouTube is oh, it's I a comparable. Very well, yeah, it's a, it's really a it's a, it's a good comparison. It's when you try to do something that is in the digital world, um, uh, then you you get into this problem uh, of um, trying to to be successful. Mm-hmm. Competition is very hard. And sometimes you know deep in your uh, deep in yourself that uh, your product or your video is better than something else. And uh, but but yet you will see that maybe you compare it to another video to another app, 
and uh, you see, okay, mine is so much better, but you will see maybe the other app, the other video perform much better than you and you cannot figure out why. So it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's tough. So, uh, and this is important also in the development phase. Um, it is, so for, for a, from a developer perspective or for a technical user, like maybe you can be like very advanced user, Mm -hmm. You value a lot the feature, like, oh, I have this specific feature that for me is game changer and this is what it will mean. But this doesn't mean that the market as a whole is actually caring a lot about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so figuring out what is the right balance uh, of features, of maybe usability, but also marketing, it's, uh, it's, it is the, the real challenge. Unfortunately, an app that has uh, many super advanced features, uh, it's not guaranteed that will sell more than a simple app uh, that has maybe one or two. There's many factors in it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Many. Yeah. I... There's a lot to unpack there. This is a whole different conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. We'll definitely now you've just triggered a part two. <laughs> uh, so well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think what I'll say to that is um, it's tough. Where to start? Um, the, it, it's simple things, I think. Um, you have to build your app with your end user in mind and you mm -hmm. can decide not always but you can decide who's going to buy your app with um mm -hmm. yeah with how you position it yeah in the market what you value what you believe i see this all the time the apps that we think of the successful ones they have a very strong brand and what i mean by brand is that's a brand isn't a fancy logo or a fancy name it's a set of expectations from users um when i interact with this brand let's use halide as an example when i interact with the halide brand the lux optics team mm -hmm. i have a set of expectations and uh and i know the values are going to match up with with mine i'm not speaking as myself now just as a mm -hmm. yeah, a, yeah. a random Yes. User. And they will they will compromise features in order that they want in order to use yeah. your app. They may even use multiple apps just because but they they want to use your app because their values align with yours. Uh that's that I think is very powerful. Young people these days, they they buy so much based on value and mm -hmm. what they perceive the value of the manufacturer to be. And manufacturers and um, companies do this all the time i see and it's so i hate it it's so superficial when whatever the current uh cool trend is mm. everyone just switches their beliefs apparently and mm. moves over and it's, it's like i don't know how successful these this strategy is i, I don't think it's particularly mm. successful uh to be fair i think uh Authenticity is what people appreciate and what sells, for lack of a better word. Yeah, that's those are my but, uh, yes, actual thoughts. Yeah, the, the, the key is, as you said, this um, to figure out that, like, to, to figure out who's going to buy your app and, as you say, to build a brand around it Build i tell it. you what I, sorry um just use use the two of us as an example like yeah. i use reflex because <clears throat> i like you guys oh thank you like no seriously because as as we just mentioned like it doesn't have the main features that i want that's not a secret i'm not yeah. trying to insult you by that I, oh, um, okay. why ask yourself why did i make a video on my youtube channel my living depends on my youtube channel right bear in mind mm -hmm. why did i make a video on your app uh and then invest so much time you know i we spoke on the podcast uh, on the 
yeah. the, the video afterwards. It was because I bought into into you guys. I'm like, wow, these these three guys, we share the same values and beliefs. Yes, we do. We do, and uh, and it's it's a big part. I agree. We are, of course, uh, very happy that this is the case. Oh, bless you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, so there is that component too, and it's so evident in many business. You don't buy the product; you kind of buy the idea. Um, and uh, of course, it's kind of it, this is very evident in I don't know, uh, let's say multinational companies so very big brand, but. In the indie, let's call it like that, in the mm -hmm. indie world, uh, sometimes this is also very important. Um, like uh, the, the, the first buyers that they feel that they connect to you and the, that there is this feel of community uh, when you all share the same, the same value. So this is all, it is absolutely, absolutely true. Um, so... Of course, one way, uh, yeah. So as you say, as soon as a user feels connected uh, to the to the idea, to the uh, to the app, to the company, mm. then maybe can kind of, yeah, kind of uh, forget this couple of features that are not there and keep using uh, your product because they they feel part of, of something. I think um, it's a it's a really big part of it. Yeah, because if you look at, again, using Halide as an example, yeah. the app is, I mean, forget the recent advancements with the macro and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. app that became very successful, Halide Mark 1, say, mm -hmm. was very feature light. It didn't have much in no. it compared to a pro cam and a pro camera and a moment. Like, these are all feature packed. Halide yeah. was bare bones, but it was extremely popular. So they've decided their audience is going to be yes. people who like the bare bones and they're not going to try and pretend to be for everybody or pretend to be for someone else. Yes. I think um, if we, uh, if we uh, keep with the example of a light, they, so I, I want to spend uh, maybe a few words. I mean, they have mm. a marketing, um, not even call it marketing, but kind of this, they, they build, like a story around it. They mm -hmm. are very good at this. And then, as you say, like, okay, now they have, uh, they have a couple of uh, very important uh, features. Okay, the, the macro the macro stuff that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's really good. I mean, you have to make it. It's, it's a good, it's an advanced feature, let's say. I don't use it. I don't, uh, don't like it, uh, but, but it's, uh, it's advanced. I can see mm -hmm. how many people can, can use it. And, um, but the rest of the app, um, it's, um, yeah, as you say, featureless. But to their defense, I have to say, all this kind of well-designed, these leak animations, mm -hmm. um, uh, we have to understand this is also work. So making something that looks simple and feels snappy and fluid and simple, and let translate this into code. This is this is very difficult. It's mm. not easy. So it is really. Um, I, I, I wanted. I want to stress this. Uh, it is not. It's easy to say. Oh yeah, the uh, slow shutter. Uh, this is advanced. I mean, it's doing. I don't know so many computations per second, and it's giving these pictures. Uh, uh, it's for sure more advanced than. They allied the wheel mode, but mm -hmm. it's it's actually in the compl complexity wise uh, they're comparable um, in into how to like uh, to 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 fiddle with the interface. So mm -hmm. they went to that path and uh, yeah, and they're very successful with it. And I, I wish them to continue with their success. Um, it's uh, it's a very good app. Uh, so. And they, I mean, who do they sell? Uh, what, what is their audience? Uh, it remains. Good question. Yeah, it's. Uh, I would say I'm part of their audience. Um, I like, it, for me, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought about 
<laughs> it's Why? uh it's um, I try and look at whole of market to be honest as a reviewer. I try and put myself in yeah different uh, people's shoes. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's um it's a well designed it's I ah it's well here's an interesting thought. Mm. I think part of me likes a lie because I'm supposed to like it. If yes, I want to be, oh, a, that, oh my God, that's also a very big component. Yes. If I want to be one of the cool kids, yes, the cool exactly. kids use Halai. And then, if you go uh, on Twitter and Instagram, they're all hashtagging Halai. And, yeah, I absolutely you know? <laughs> agree. Yes, yes. I mean, and again, uh, congratulations to them uh, to reach to that point uh, where there is such a brand awareness and uh, uh, there is such a hype uh, on it. So, Really big, uh, big congratulations! Because again, this is also difficult um, to get there. So uh, it's um, yeah, um, but there is space for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I would. So this is uh, this is something that I I really believe, uh, and I also saw that for uh, I mean, I, I get many complaints about pricing and stuff. You you don't even I mean you don't really <laughs> like you don't really you uh, imagine like what people write us, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let's say that's another video again. That's, that's a another three. video. <laughs> but let's say like many develop. I mean, I follow some people on Twitter and like more experienced developers uh, than me, and they all say you should focus on the on the people who buy your apps and not the people who complain that your apps are expensive it's mm -hmm. uh and which is like it's true there will always be people complaining there will always be people that will hate what you do no matter what you do yeah uh, that's that's how this world works um and in that case the people are actually genuine the people that actually value the product and realize oh this cost 4.99 which is half of a cup at starbucks and i can have this up forever <laughs> i mean it's like yeah. then, then uh, if i'm in, if i have this hobby serious or not i think i can afford 4.99 so these people that they approach um the, this business in this way uh then you realize they have more ups which is totally fine i mean it's your hobby and also just to try something new and it's so cheap if you go out of this bubble in your head that you are paying for an app, it's just irrational. It's a, uh, it's uh, completely, completely irrational. Uh, what what the market? Uh, so, if you are out of this, you you break this barrier, then it's fine to buy. I don't know, um, Allied, and then you realize, oh, there is the new. Let's, uh, let's see what they can do and they also buy us. So this is why I say mm -hmm. there is space for, for everybody. Um, and actually it's good that there are more apps because they, they open the market, let's say. Many, there's many people that have absolutely no idea that you can have manual controls on your iPhone and they would like to have it, but they don't have any idea mm -hmm. that, this, uh, that this is there. I still get, because we live in this bubble, David, you and I, <laughs> where oh my god minor controls is i don't know 10 years at least five years it's there in our v foundation yeah uh, and uh, but i still get uh i still get uh, messages um and emails saying oh i love uh finally i can have minor controls on my iphone or reflex <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so, enjoy them yes so that's uh it's good that the uh, and maybe now, I mean, this customer, this, this user uh, bought the Reflex and uh, it was introduced in the camera app world. And if yes, if this is his hobby and he's serious about it, he might try something else. Uh, so it's good also for other apps. And the same is goes into the opposite uh, for our case. Mm. I was just uh, I was just thinking about kind of comparing your situation to my videos and who I make my videos for. Mm. Obviously, I have like quite a. I talk quite calmly, but people always comment, "Oh, I love your calm, soothing, uh, mm -hmm. rational voice." I'm like, mm -hmm. "That's interesting." I didn't try and have a calm, soothing, rational voice. But <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's just just how I talk. Uh, and but in my head, I'm being very enthusiastic, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is funny. Well, 
anyway, uh, I like to come with the super detailed analytical point of view, which uh, is the complete opposite to say like a Shane Mostyn type. Um, mm-hmm. And, but that's my, op- people who are, people who watch my videos, uh, they like that sort of stuff. And that's who I make my videos for. I, mm-hmm. I suppose when I started making them, I didn't think this person will watch my video. This is who my video is for. It just mm. happened to be that way. I made the best video for me that I would like to yeah. watch. And that's, uh, that's and these people just happen to like it. And when I try and go in a different direction, maybe I'll like, hmm, I want to get more views. I'll go more mainstream. Mm. People, people hate it. It actually gets less views. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's, um, I think, uh, I think it's good to be niche. Um, it's um it it might sound like a contradiction but uh uh to go mainstream there's a, a lot of lot of competition so i think you you built a good base the videos are the production production quality is uh, I, I, to the top and i i don't think i'm the first one saying this so <laughs> I, uh, so it's not true but thank you i think it is it is true and uh, everybody agrees <laughs> with it <laughs> and i think you've been hearing this sentence many times and it's true it's embarrassing uh, <laughs> it's even more embarrassing in person <laughs> so um and uh it will it will uh i'm sure it will it will grow uh and the results if you keep doing it the results um uh, I'm sure it will come. The thing is uh, that we need all of us in this business, a lot of patience and keep persisting. And, um, mm-hmm. um, but there's nothing to, in your videos, there's very little to improve. Production quality is already at the top. The, the detail on which you describe the apps, it's, it's really good. Um, it, it is true, they are technical. This is why I like them. <laughs> 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 coming from from a technical guy perspective um so i think uh, it's looking good but sometimes i watch my videos back and my eyes are rolling in my head because i'm just like why are you g- going off on a tangent on this minor <laughs> detail that no one cares about but you <laughs> but it's uh i mean it's that's why they it's these videos are so particular right it's um, but you, I mean, there, there is people. I mean, if there is me that I enjoy them, then yeah. we are not alone in the. I mean, then there must be so many people like me that enjoy seeing them. So there's nothing wrong uh, with it. They're they're very good. Uh, the Thank you. Very very good. I'm trying to work on my. I suppose now that I'm I'm come back, mm-hmm. I want to work on my uh, my more storytelling but like you said right at the beginning it's compromise the story has to go if i want to get this video out within a month or two yes i'm always and but the thing that takes the time is i'll write the script the full script with the story in it Mm -hmm. which takes weeks and weeks of time and then just before i oh salvo sometimes right once once i spent one week on one sentence and I never even made the video. So <laughs> uh, I know that that's how particular I am. And so I'll write the script over many weeks, sometimes months, but, and then I won't even record the story elements. I'll just remove them because okay. I'm thinking, God, if I'm going to actually film all this, it's going to take another two months to, to <laughs> film it. And then edit it together if i especially when you're on a youtuber's schedule you know one video a week and yeah and like that, it's not going to happen mm. so now that i've come back i do want to start I, I didn't this time with the re-expose mm. hands-on video yeah um and that was one of the main one of the reasons for that was because it's it's the beta situation the beta yeah. is very i'm like do i start because like like I just said, I can, I can spend a week on a sentence. So yeah. if, if I um, <laughs> if I spend this amount of time talking about one element in the beta, and then it's going to change in the next yeah, beta. Yes, this, yes, like, yes, oh, yeah, okay, exactly. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally, I totally understand. Um, but it came out great. So did you like I mean, the video? I liked the video. I liked the video a lot. 
Oh, it was different for me. It was more hands-on, more just yes, but, I'm just using the app. Yes. Um, the thing is, I don't know the 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 business, but I can say um, sometimes we focus on details. We spend so much time on something that people might not even notice. Oh, and now we have to, yeah. So this is this is uh, true for your YouTube videos. Is true for maybe uh, like my app finding the the, the right the pixel position where to put this label. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's um, and uh, I think I don't know what uh, what you think about it, but I think uh, we are being biased by this whole Apple situation that everything is shiny and perfect from the box to the, uh, yeah, everything gets so, and that's the, the example. I mean, I'm talking uh, about me, about also the products and, and the app. That's the example that you want to point at and the precision in the details, then it, it's, it's good. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, uh, it's. I'm starting to realize that it might be the wrong approach, because we, I mean, at least for for our companies, uh, like it's important to to give the people what they need, especially in the apps, um, uh, without spending too much time in something that um, that it doesn't make such a big impact let's say. And in your mm -hmm. case, I'm sure that your viewers would like more videos from you than like uh, the perfect sentence. Yeah. So I know it's difficult. It's difficult because we are both like perfectionists. Um, but it's something that uh, we might consider both of us. It depends sure. what the goal is. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, if I was still full time on YouTube, I'd mm -hmm. be going for, I always went for, for quantity, one video per week. And yeah. there had to be a lot of compromise, but there, had, there was less compromise over time because I got better. Like yes. you said about you. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Like something that took me a week to do once, I can do in half an hour now, yes. something like that. Yes. So, that's how obviously quality improves and things. And like my videos became popular in 2020 with the fraction of the production value that they have now. So people obviously aren't watching for the production value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really care about that. Yeah. So yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it, it's a strange, uh, strange thing, but yeah. now my goal has shifted. Now my goal is not to grow my channel whatsoever. Okay. Mm -hmm. My goal is simply to attract sponsors and third parties who want to hire me to make videos for them companies yeah. that's it that's my goal and to, to, to do that the production value has to be tip top yes i i mean if then that is the goal mm -hmm. and i think it's a it's a very so it's um how can i say it's a very good idea mm. uh, because people will watch uh, your videos and uh, immediately they will know okay this guy knows how to film uh, yeah. to produce. <laughs> so in that case then yes then then you want to then it's true uh it's good to showcase let's say then it, it becomes like uh, a showcase on your yeah. capabilities of uh, filmmaking and and so on in, and stuff so that's um in that case but it's good because now you have a goal right mm -hmm. for growing the channel then i would uh, it's mine is just uh uh, like uh, uh, not a suggestion how do you say it's an hypothesis I don't know because I don't have a YouTube channel oh yes mm -hmm. we do but but not uh, <laughs> 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 uh, in that case I uh, I would think that quantity favor, the algorithm favors more quantity and consistency than uh, does, every, yeah. a video every two months um, yeah, and audiences just want the information from me. They don't really care that I'm, yes. I'm filming at f1.8 with the yes. filter yes. and color grading. They don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yes. Do you mm. wanna do you wanna pause there and pick up 
another time because it's been over an hour. I've learned, I've learned a lot, and uh, we can pause it. Um, yes, and we can uh, do it. Uh, we can do time. a part two and a part three because yeah. we have to discuss uh, price and what was the other. I think it was just having an app in the market. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I would, you know, what I'd love to do. Never done this before. I'd love to have developers from two or three different apps. Like I'd, I'd love to have you maybe matched from Darkroom um, mm-hmm. and a different app developer and just have a conversation. I, I don't think it's ever been done before, but perhaps it has on YouTube. I mean, I'm just ignorant to it. Oh, like uh, in the same room. Like yeah. Same, uh, Share room, ideas. Room, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, tell, I'm up for it. Tell stories. Mm-hmm. I'm up for it. Yeah. It's uh, that would be very cool actually. Yeah. Uh, that would be that very, would be very fun. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I'll see what I can do. I'll see who's going to still talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one, one more thing before I go. Um, mm-hmm. I, I managed to get like the Halai developers and the, the Darkroom developers onto mm-hmm. my podcast because of yeah. the production value yeah. of my videos. They, they all say the same thing. Like, Oh, okay. This guy's different. I, this isn't just uh, someone setting up a camera and pressing yes. record because yeah. I could, we, maybe the guy setting up in his room and pressing record and sat at a desk may have better information, but it's not keeping anyone engaged. You know, it's sure. there's, there's a perceived, there's more effort, I suppose, gone into filming and, I don't know. So yeah, it served me well as well, standing sure. out from that point of view. Absolutely, absolutely.